Hi, this is Margo. This is Sunday late afternoon, July 11th, 2021. I hope everyone is safe and doing as well as possible. We made it through another week. Another, you know, it's like every day is about three or four lifetimes, it feels like. So, um, I'd like to welcome everyone to the show today. This will be my weekly update that I will be putting on YouTube. We're going to cover sea ice, methane, some other climate news, earthquakes, things like that. <coughs> so, um, and if you'd like to see updates during the week, I release updates for my Subscribestar members and the um, details are in the description box below if you'd like to join us over there we'd love to have you and before I get started I'd also like to thank the people who sent me donations this week I, I really appreciate it and um, it's it really touches my heart and you know if you can't donate I understand that's okay you know, just if you'll give my video a thumbs up, and I like the <clears throat> the positive comments and <clears throat> well wishes and prayers and you know all of that. You know, it's it we're we're a, a community here, and we're just trying to watch things as they unfold in these end times. I want to start out. <clears throat> this is Zoom Earth for today. And I just wanted to show you uh, where this big fire in California is. It's not too far from where I'm located. This is Reno here on the map. <clears throat> Here's Lake Tahoe down here. This is Pyramid Lake. And this is the smoke streaming up. This is a complex of a couple of fires and it's called the Beckworth Fire now. It's in Northern California. See it's kind of in a horseshoe shape. It started this last week <coughs> um, over at Frenchman Lake and it it burned all around the lake and now it's it's a uh, it burned, I watched the local news tonight, and it's burned 20 homes at Doyle, California. If you know where that is, it's about 45 miles north of Reno on 395. They're evacuating. The fire crossed the highway last night or this morning. They've shut down the road, and um, so can't go into California I don't think and <clears throat> here are the hot spots this is the biggest fire in California it's around I think it's around 80,000 acres right now 85 it doubled yesterday doubled in size so all the red orange that's the fire Here's 395. This is Frenchman Lake over here, I think. Yeah, uh, it it's already burned around there. Went right up to the shore, and see it's it's huge. And um, here's 395 where it comes up from Nevada. Let's see. Look how close. I'm sure this is this is where it cr it's crossed the highway. Now Doyle is <coughs> we got to zoom in. It's right I think this is it right in here. We missed the Missed the marker for it. There's an army depot up here. 
and um, a lot of people uh, live up here and commute to Reno to work. It's a very small community. There's, and just, if you keep going north on 395 is Honey Lake. <clears throat> right here and it's it's pretty much dry I know it looks like there's water in there but last time I was up there it was almost all a dry lake bed this is Janesville up there and then um, uh oh I didn't mean to do that and then further up north and west You've got, well, Susanville is right right here. This is in California. And um, Lake Almanor is just to the left. And um, we see Lake Almanor a lot in the earthquake, earthquake maps. So that's what's going on. Um, the air quality um, is not not great here in Reno I mean it's it's bad for sensitive people like me but I'm staying in but um, it's just a little hazy today because the way the wind is blowing S and um, you know nobody from Reno is having to evacuate or anything it's it's mainly north and this this is the California line so that I, I thought I'd give you a report from the front lines here on this. Here are some more fires burning in Northern California. And here's in Oregon. This looks pretty bad. Look at this. And um, we've got fires burning all over the place. See all the dots. And then up in Canada, there's a lot of fires burning and it's kind of let's go back y you can see the smoke better if we go back here see all the smoke these are from fires in Canada and then if we go across the Pacific we can see the fires in Russia let's go forward in time and um a whole bunch of new fires have broken out on this eastern side. See all the red dots. And this smoke, it, it kind of cuts off here above the Arctic Circle. But when we look on NASA Worldview, you'll see the smoke going all the way up and up over, over the ocean there. And so Russia, Russia's in big, big danger. And Robin's been reporting on that. I haven't really reported. Uh, um, normally I don't report on fires that much. <coughs> I mean, if it's local, uh, you know, I'll tell you what's going on from my neck of the woods and what the air is like and stuff like that. But... This is fire season, so there's that. I've also got a couple of articles I want to start off with. Uh, these are both from the Barents Observer. This is out of Norway. And they cover all kinds of things in the Arctic. This, These articles were released this week. Um, this one it says the looming Arctic collapse. More than 40% of North Russian buildings are starting to crumble. And guess why? Permafrost. Previously solid ground is quickly degrading. The melting of the permafrost is about to cause huge damage to buildings and infrastructure across the country, Russia's natural resource minister warns. Here's a picture. And it says the heat is on. 
and it is hitting the Arctic with detrimental consequence. Global warming is now leading to quick and irreversible change in the north, and Russia is among the ones worst affected. This week, the temperatures in the Russian north again beat records in Soskila, Sos a small community in the Arctic Circle. The air temperature reached 31.9 C, the highest measurement since 1936. According to Roshidromit, the Russian Meteorology Institute, average temperatures along parts of the Russian Arctic coast had since 1998 increased with as much as 4.95 C degrees. So there you go. And uh, then they start uh, talking about, okay, here we go, more than 40% of all the buildings in the north are now experiencing deformation in their building structure and the construction of roads and railways is getting increasingly difficult. This was in a roundtable discussion. According to Koslev, the melting, or is it, they should say thawing ground, is today the underlying reason for 23% of all technical system failure in the region and up to 29% of oil and gas production facilities can no longer be operated. Leading Russian researchers estimate that the degrading ground by the year 2050 will inflict damages worth about 5 trillion rubles or uh, 58 billion pounds. This is equal to about 25 percent of the total Russian federal budget. Here's a picture of Norilsk. We, I've reported on that town. It's the most polluted town in the world, I think, next to Beijing. What will happen in our towns in 10, 50, 100 years, they ask. They're concerned. Uh, construction works in the area. They've got to make Technolo technology adjustments, on and on. So, you know, this is coming to to uh, the forefront now. Now that things are shifting, the whole landscape is shifting as the permafrost is thawing. They keep saying melting. I've been corrected on that. It's thawing, but we it's all the same thing. They are doing a new new uh, research. They're going to be following the permafrost. Um, they're launching a new state monitoring system for the permafrost. The first pilot phase will cover the period 2022 to 2024 and will be based on experiences and methodology applied in Spitsbergen, Franz Josef Land, and Severnaya Zemlya. We know where those are. The permafrost melting is already affecting operators of Arctic infrastructure, including oil and gas installations. Experts have agreed that the spill of 21,000 tons of diesel oil in the Tamir Peninsula in 2020, remember that, after, uh, came after the ground under a major oil storage tank degraded. Well, not only that, the pipe broke because of that. Uh, researchers from the Russian Cryosphere Institute believe that the border of the permafrost zone over the last 40 years has moved more than 30 kilometers to the north and that up to 500 square kilometers of land a year it is every year sliding into the Arctic Ocean and disappearing. How do you like that? This process is irreversible and it is impossible to stop it. With the melting of the frozen tundra 
comes also growing risk of new and lethal diseases. Among the many infectious disease agents preserved in the permafrost is anthrax. So just when you thought it was safe to go out again, you got this coming up. So there's that. My second story, and I will leave links below, is also from the Barents Observer this week. And this pulls on everyone's heartstrings. Polar bears face extinction in Svalbard and Arctic Russia. In 50 years, there might be no more polar bears in far northern archipelagos like Svalbard, says leader of the International Polar Bear Specialist Group. Well, I'll be surprised if any anybody's around to see if the polar bears are extinct or not. According to Dag von Graven, climate change will ultimately lead to the extinction of the polar bear populations in Svalbard and major parts of the Russian Arctic. Well, when you see Svalbard on the map right now, it's a lot of it's already melted. I mean, it's... anyway... So anyway, they've got a polar bear. He's part of the Species Survival Commission's Polar Bear Specialist Group. He's the outgoing chair. He says, I believe the polar bear in 50 years' time will live only in northern Canada and in Greenland in the far western polar waters referred to as the last ice area. In 50 years, the Arctic Ocean will be ice-free in summertime. Well, it won't take that long. The sea ice will melt much earlier in spring and freeze much later in fall. The multi-year ice will be completely gone. Well, it's almost gone already. The number of the planet's polar bears will drop, and in Svalbard, they will mainly be gone. So, I don't know what they're going to do about it. It's not been good for a decade for the Arctic and its ecosystems. The vast areas on top of the world have seen a dramatic temperature increase and big melting of the sea ice. Consequences are dire for vulnerable Arctic flora and fauna. Well, yeah, it's all changing. It's, it'll never go back. The number of polar bears is today estimated to be 26,000, of which between 1,900 and 3,600 live in the Barents Sea region. Well, there's no ice there right now. The Svalbard bear population is estimated to 300. Most of them live in the eastern parts of the archipelago and in the northern forts. Many of the bears wander huge distances and often cross national borders. They know no borders. Until 2006, the polar bear was considered a sustainable species, but its status has changed to vulnerable. According to Dag von Graven, we now see the start of what could lead to the extinction of the bear population in Svalbard. He now calls for enhanced international cooperation on the issue. They're just going to have to move them. Oh, listen to this. Uh, well, he's say, saying don't kill them. Apparently they trade the, for the bear skins anyway the bears are also suffer from environmental toxins and are believed to be among the most polluted species on the planet studies have found high levels of substances like pcb and brominated flame retardants in blood and fat layers the high levels of toxins in combination with less access to food in a warmer climate 
can give the polar bears major problems in the future. So there you go. So we've got the uh, the uh, all the buildings and infrastructure going going down, and the polar bears going away because of all of this. So it's it's just the beginning. You know, it's just it's seriously just the beginning and everything's changing, nothing's going back to the way it was. And um I believe we're in the end times and we all need to to get ready spiritually to 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 leave the planet. That's my belief. So anyway, let's look at methane. Here I'm looking at the NOAA data for the 477-469 millibar reading. They have renamed <coughs> these METOP satellites as I showed last week. They're now calling the METOP-1 satellite METOP-B. So here we are for the 10th or yesterday in the morning. The mean or average was 1915 parts per billion. The high reading was 2647, so that's kind of spiking up there on that high reading. And notice all these pinks down here in the southern hemisphere, and especially around the Antarctic. And you better fasten your seatbelt before we go to CAMS. You just better fasten it because you're going to be shocked when you see see what's going on in the Antarctic. We can also see a lot of pinks over most of the northern hemisphere here. And that pink is this range right here between 2000 and whatever the highest number is here on each one for the parts per billion. Here in the afternoon the mean was 1916. The high reading was 2365. On the MetOp 2 or MetOp A satellite and Larry I liked his comment. He said that whoever renamed these satellites had dyslexia. It seems like it it doesn't make any sense. Um, the mean or average was 1894. The high reading was 2418. And in the afternoon the mean was 1895. The high reading was 2371. Here's the spreadsheet and the chart where I've been tracking this data since March of 2019. These are the weekly numbers and um, I've got a separate page for the daily data. I started tracking it daily uh, about a year and a half ago. <coughs> so here, here's the number the average for the tenth comes out to be 1905 parts per billion that's showing an increase over last week of 2.75 parts per billion. And so we're halfway up here, see the blue line, in between 1900 and 1910. We had passed last year's uh, max maximum, see where it peaked out in September and October of 1904.25. We've passed that and we're on our way up down here um, we're 18.25 parts per billion than higher than a year ago we're 47.75 parts per billion higher than when we started tracking this in March of 2019 so we've we're on the way up. Um, so I'll have to, well when when I do the graph next time it'll probably 
it'll probably add another 10. Whenever you get close to the that next line, it adds another 10. So maybe next week we'll have another another section added in up here. I'll show you what happened this week. Here's where I track it daily. Here we were last Sunday. This is for the Saturday date of the day before. We were at 1902.25 and that had gone down uh, 0.75 that day. But for the week we went up 3.5. <coughs> <coughs> Then on Sunday, it went up one part per billion. On Monday, it went down half a part per billion. On Tuesday, it shot up one and a half parts per billion. And we reached 1904.25. And that, that was the max that was from last year. So that's when we reached the same, same as last year. So, um, that when, and then last year we reached the max from the year before right around the same time. And so, and then on Wednesday, it went up half a part per billion. Thursday, it went up 0.25 and no change on Friday or Saturday, still holding at 1905, which where it shows the increase of 2.75 and we're 18.25 parts per billion higher than a year ago. So it's not looking good. Now let's move on to the CAMS data. So here we are. I have Saturday ready to go, Arctic view, and surface level. Here's the color ledger. And now what I'm telling everyone, since it looks like they tweaked the algorithms, they didn't change the the colors or the numbers down here, but um, since we're 20 parts for about 20 parts per billion higher than we were a year ago and it looks 20 parts per billion lower than where we were when I was showing all this data I think if we add 40 parts per billion to whatever color is showing here that we might have a more realistic idea of what what it really looks like so, because we're not seeing that many greens. And not too long ago, we were seeing, remember, we were seeing solid green over the Arctic. So they tweaked it sometime in the last few months. I don't know when. I'll have to go back and, and look through my videos and see. Um, it, you know, it might have happened when camps was down for a few days and they brought it back up and we were we were in the the fluctuating phase maybe it wasn't in a big rising phase so I don't know I don't know all I know is it's not looking good we're in big trouble So the data is for Saturday and the forecast is for Sunday through Wednesday. <clears throat> and it really should look a lot worse considering this is the highest I mean, we passed the maximum last year from last year. We're at 1905 on 500 parts per billion. So.
so here in the Scandinavian area it's still filling up with very high readings watch this there's a wave that's going to move out see see right there and uh, there's a wave moving across Russia when you see these waves moving across that's a sign that methane is really on the rise we're seeing higher background readings across Russia and over here in eastern Siberia this is where a bunch of new fires are burning and uh, they're burning down here in the Yakutia area and um, the smoke the smoke is just streaming up and so you can see the methane rising here see see it moving up it's coming back to life in Alaska <coughs> here it's still bubbling and doing its thing around comps and mullets so um, the area where they were talking about the polar bears were um, this is fall part here and then permafrost where they're going to be studying it this is Franz Josef land and then this is Severnaya Zemlya up here and so it's these couple of areas it's uh, we've got a hot spot here in the North Kara Sea and then over here see Canada see all these high readings um, they've got lots of fires burning all the way across now we'll go to the North Pole view Here we can see most of the northern hemisphere. Here's the Persian Gulf, it's filled up. Here's Europe, here's UK, Ireland, and see it's streaming up <coughs> through this North Sea. Here's Spain, here's uh, France. This is northern northern Africa down here here's India see it's filling back up China is filling back up Russia starts uh, right along here and see these high very high readings see it's um, see this wave moving up from China into Russia here in North America uh, it's from the Midwest over east the usual it should look worse than that and because you know we're, we maxed out we're maxing out so anyway just add 40 parts per billion on and you'll get an idea on these colors now we're gonna zip down to the Antarctic I'm gonna be showing this every week I'm also doing a midweek update on Wednesdays for my Subscribestar members where I go over everything it's a modified version of my Sunday show and then if I'm able to I'll do another um, sea ice update sometime in between all of that uh, between Wednesday and Sunday now uh, okay so here's the Antarctic this is the Western Peninsula and notice you can see the outline of a lot of the land now 
because we've got this higher reading instead of the uh, navy color which is um, 1800 parts per billion we're seeing the next color up this light blue is 1820 and that's it's coming up from around a lot of these coastlines and from the interior now and we also see the next next color up see right there this is where the brunt ice shelf is and also here on the western peninsula this is where the Larsen Sea ice shelf is and um, now some of this these colors uh, see it's streaming down from from the northern part from like South America and uh, Australia and Africa and then streaming out but you'll be able to see it's coming up all around these coastlines here's the Amory ice sheet remember last week it was just barely coming up around the edges but this one is said fast on your seat belt here we go this is kind of flipping me out <clears throat> Look at this. See where it just kind of stays uh, stays in the area. See, this is the Ross Ice Shelf here. The Ross Sea, it's coming up. It's coming up. This is the western um, part of Antarctica. It's coming up from the surface. Uh, it's coming up. Th th um, this is the land. The there are mountains here uh, right next to the Ross Ice Shelf. So it's coming up on land there. It's coming up around the coast here. And here's the Amory Ice Sheet. You can see that's coming up there. Um, this whole this whole ocean area and look at look at here around the brunt ice sheet this whole area here's the Weddell Sea see it's coming up there here's the western peninsula it's all just covered so I don't know I, I think it, this is coming up from the surface and it's also um, higher methane mixing in that's redistributing around the planet it doesn't stay just in one hemisphere or the other it mixes but at surface level you know you can you can pretty much tell can pretty much isolate the areas where it's coming up and so you can see it streaming down here from South America see it streaming down but this is a separate area see so I'm gonna keep a close eye on this and uh, I'll let you know what happens if I see anything unusual Be well besides it increasing but I've never seen it do that before here we are on the global view now last year we did see <coughs> the um, light blue here I'll scoot this down a little we saw the light blue fill up the picture all the way to the bottom <coughs> but we I don't remember I'll have to go back and look at some of the older videos from last year 
to see. I don't remember it coming up around the coastlines like this. I mean, we just saw a little little pop here and there. It wasn't <clears throat> it wasn't just streaming up. <clears throat> So we can see it's um this color is shifting pretty fast from the dark blue to the lighter blue in the southern hemisphere and see the next color the aqua is um coming further south as well. You can also make out Australia now because see the light blue, you can see the outlines, the black outlines of all the of the continents better as the bl light blue comes across. Now we'll look at 500 HPA. This should correspond with about the same uh, level in the atmosphere as what we're tracking on NOAA. Here we go. Look at this. Here's India, um, Southern Asia, and China. See all these hot spot high readings. Very high. And Here's Canada, and see it's it, it's got to be uh, dispersing. See the green down here all the way, and then the lighter green that's coming down further south too. Now we'll look at total column. This is methane added up through all the different layers of the atmosphere. So again, now here's um, where China goes up into Russia, right there. And see it's hot all the way down. And see this Persian Gulf, that's all filled up with red. We've got red coming across Saudi Arabia and the Red Sea and see all this red orange area the next color up will be red it's, it's, so we're, we're seeing the red spreading out now as the methane is rising we're also seeing some greenish um, see down here over the Weddell Sea also over over the Ross Sea and darker green even all the way to the Antarctic. We had an ozone hole open up briefly uh, down here in the South Pacific a few days ago. It's it closed back up pretty quick. All right, let's move on. I know these shows I tend they tend to drag out, but you know, it's uh, try and get it all in, all in as best we can. Here's sulfur dioxide around the planet for today. We've been seeing some high readings over the interior of North Africa this week. I don't know why. I don't know what the source is. This is also where we're seeing the highest readings on the planet. I don't know if it's connected with that. This is 500 HPA. Here we have a high reading. Uh, this is from Turkey. 
that's the highest right there I think that's I think that's yeah it's this eastern part of Turkey this is a North Pole view of the fires this is from cams and well it's the actually the smoke from the fires and here's Russia see and see how it's spread out across the uh, all the way to Alaska in in the Aleutian Island region and even to it's come across here south of Alaska here's look at all of Canada with these fires see the fi the fire from California is <coughs> can't hardly see it here <coughs> here it is in context this is the global view and these are the fires that are kind of constantly burning in Africa and so just to put things in context here's what we've got right now worldwide that's all of those now next we'll get started on sea ice we'll look at this the go through the pictures have our slideshow here I took these pictures from Climate Reanalyzer this week. This is sea ice and snow cover as of today in the Arctic. And we can see the Hudson Bay is almost all clear. Baffin Bay is cleared out quite a bit. Just a little bit of ice left on this west side. In Greenland on this it's it's almost all ice free around um east east and west here's Svalbard it's melt, melted around Svalbard here's Franz Josef land we can see Novi Zemlya is clear um, let's let's zoom in can see this better this area here in the North Kara Sea that that's some um, still kind of holding on. Here's Severnaya Zemlya. We can look at look at how this Laptev Sea has opened up this week, and it's almost all ice free along from from uh, Tamir over. Look at this. Here's New Siberian Islands. Um, there's some thicker ice here that's taking some time to break down but um, it's been raining up here and uh, snowing we've had got some snow up here too okay over here along the Alaska coastline it's melting and here in the Munston Gulf that's ice free <coughs> Now we've been following what was left of the multi-year thick as sea ice um, over the winter time and it moved from this part of the Arctic. It, uh, been, it's been sliding um, and it, it ended up here in the Beaufort Sea just north of Alaska and you can see the different color here where it's getting darker it's breaking down and fasten your seat belt on that too so um, here are the tributaries in this Canadian archipelago these are clearing out these are uh, this will be an exit point for sea ice this uh, nearest strait is breaking up this will be an exit point for sea ice also the Fram Strait is an exit point so let's go through and see what's happened this week here we were last Sunday uh, for our show last week this is 
what it looked like on the 4th. So let's just click through and see how it's changed. Here's Monday. Wow, look at that change. Look at, and we'll go back. Look at that huge, huge change in the Laptev C and the Chuck Chi C there. Here's the 6th. And it can open up and then close back up just depending on how what the weather's doing and how the if the ice is breaking up and moves back out the model will pick it up as, as it's filling up it's kind of deceiving like that here's the seventh eighth ninth tenth and here we are today so a big change from the 10th to the 11th you see that there's yesterday and today so it's in high melt now we'll go through the Navy models um, this is from the US Navy this is sea ice thickness from the Arctic here's the color ledger on the right the bright aqua is about 2 to 2.25 meters thick. We don't have a lot of that left, just right down here above Canada and Greenland, and a little bit in the Beaufort Sea, and a little bit in the Chukchi Sea, and the Kara Sea. And then it goes down. This dark aqua is about one and a half meters thick. The uh, dark purple is about one meter thick. The blue is about 1.25 meters thick. And then it just gets lighter and lighter into lavender as it gets thinner and thinner and thinner down to nothing. So let's just so here's what it what it is right now. Here in the Hudson Bay, we've got just thin ice in the center left here. Here in the Baffin Bay, um, see it's all melted around Greenland up to this nearest strait. That's breaking up, and you can see that there. <coughs> This is quite thin of what's left around Greenland, and it's not it's not very well put together. Here's Fallbard, here's Franz Josef Land. So this is the east side. We'll we'll be able to see see these holes opening up. We'll be able to see all that on NASA Worldview, and this is the Barents Sea. It's clear. Uh, here's Novaya Zemlya. It's clear. Here's a little bit of wisp here in the Kara Sea. It's almost all open now. And then the North Kara Sea. This ice is breaking up and exiting up into the Laptev Sea. And here is, see this Laptev Sea? Look how thin. Look how thin that is. Um, this will this will be gone by next week. Here's New Siberian Islands. Here's the little thicker part that's left, but the coastline is open. See, all this coastline is opened up on Russia. And look at the thinning. This is quadrant one, two, three, and four. That's what I've named them. And see, um, here in the Beaufort Sea, this is what's left of that thickest ice. And see, it's, um, there's a hole opening up next to it. It's kind of in this little arc. but um, And then it's thinning around it. So... Um, anyway, let's look at the 30-day model. 
I'm shocked. I mean, when I look at this, every time I look at this, I'm just shocked at how how much thinner it is. So the data goes back for three weeks, and the forecast goes out a week from now to the 18th. So um, by the end of the forecast period, we can see the Hudson Bay will be pretty much clear. Look at. I kind of don't have words. Let's zoom in. Look at how this thins down, and it's. see what this used to we don't have multi-year ice up here above Canada and Greenland anymore and it's look at look at how fast this goes here this is almost gone um, by the end of the forecast period uh oh I didn't mean to stop it there anyway We'll just click through. Look at the changes from day to day. I mean, it's huge changes from one day to the next. Okay. Here we are today. So here we are. This is what it's doing today. Now we'll, I'm just going to click through slowly and we can see the changes that the model is showing. So here it is at the end of the forecast period. Look at the thinning around this uh, what's left of the thickest sea ice and um, it's just in this little kind of half circle here in the Beaufort Sea and the gyre it goes clockwise and counterclockwise and it just jostles it back and forth so it breaks it up really bad and look how this is um, just really breaking up and thinning down above Greenland and Canada. So this, there's a hole opening up there, and then this is, this is the Kara Sea, I mean the Laptev Sea. It'll, it's almost all clear by next week. And here's the Chukchi Sea, here's a, a little area where it's thicker that's left hanging on, but That'll, that'll come apart, but all of this, this will, this will all go. What's purple here, that'll all go. That's one meter thick. Here's the Beaufort sea ice thickness. Um, this is still from the Navy. Here's Canada on the right, Alaska down here at the bottom. So here's what's left of the thickest sea ice. Just a little bit of green left. That's about three meters thick. And then 
we've got up into the reds just uh, little wispy uh, reds along the coastline there and um, so this area here in the Beaufort Sea see it's purple and blue so that's about 1 to 1.25 meters thick and look at how it, it's opened up down here along Alaska and Canada so let's run this 30-day model so again the forecast goes back uh, I mean the forecast goes out a week from now the data goes back for three weeks and see the lines that's where the ice is, was breaking up the leads were breaking up And when we look at 2 meter temperature anomaly, you're not going to see um, warmer temperatures up here over the sea ice, which I'm shocked about considering everything. Let's go. Here we are today. So we'll click through. And just imagine that if we had like in the red zone up here in two meter temperature anomaly uh, how how much faster it would be melting so there we are by next week so there's that here's the Baffin Bay this they just added this model this year in February here's Greenland on the right here's Canada on the left it only goes up about halfway into the Baffin Bay and on this model the um, dark red is only two meters thick instead of five meters on the other model Here's sea surface temperature in the Baffin Bay. Look at how it just goes up. <clears throat> just keeps going up, up, up. Now we'll go to the Antarctic. Here's sea ice thickness for today. So, we just saw methane coming up all around the coastlines and in the water. <coughs> Even these areas where it was the thickest, we're seeing methane coming up. And here, see on this Larsen Sea, it's coming up. Here's the 30-day animation. looks like um, it's doing some thickening it it doesn't ever get super thick down here because it melts during the sun their summer all around the edges 
has to regrow. So there's all of those. Now, let's move on. Here's National Snow and Ice Data Center Sea Ice Index. This is for today. The Arctic. I've chosen Daily View. Blue Marble and Concentration. And we can see this correlates what with what we saw on the Navy model. And the darker blue it is, the more it's broken up and less concentrated. So it's really coming apart. Here is the extent. <coughs> the blue line is this year, the dotted line is 2012, and we're, we're tied with 2012 right now. And so far, that's been the minimum the 2012 has been the minimum sea ice extent up until now and but remember that in 2012 the sea ice was a lot thicker than it was than it is now okay Antarctic Here's the Antarctic. And here's their extent chart. Now, this, this started coming back faster, earlier than, than normal. And so the extent is a little more than last year, well, quite a bit more than um, this gray-green line is last year, and the light gray line is the average. So the extent is a little bit higher than the average, and it's higher than this time last year. Here's the Greenland ice sheet for today, also from National Snow and Ice Data Center. The salmon, actually it's from yesterday, the salmon color is where it, where it's melting, all of these, it's, it's got melting going on on the ice sheet. It's been raining down here, which is not good for the ice sheet. Here are the cumulative melt days for the whole year. You can see this is going into green now, um, greenish. So 30, between 30 and 40 melt days here on this west side. We've got some blue greens up here at the top too. This is the melt extent. The red line is this year. The dotted blue line is the median. Here we are. This is as of yesterday. See it's jumped back up. It had it's so we're higher. I don't know what it was last year. I, it, it doesn't show last year's. We just have to go back at the shows and see. So yesterday it looks like it was about at 13% melt extent. So that's lower than the median, but look how high we've jumped up already this year. So that's all of those. 
Now we'll move on to climate reanalyzer. Here are maximum temperatures around the globe and here's the Arctic. Most of it is in the green and that's above freezing. We've got a little bit of blue here in the Laptev Sea. And here's the flat view. And see, here's California. It's mostly in the white. <coughs> and um, the southwest. And look at all of these areas. Idaho. Um, Montana. Uh, anyway. Africa. Spain. Saudi Arabia all the way across to India and um, other people report you know on these high temperatures uh, but anyway there was one place in Kuwait that was just off the chart I can't even remember how high it was but um, Anyway, Robin reports on that too. Here's a uh, 2 meter temperature anomaly. This is for air temperature over the Arctic. See it is higher right up here at Siberia um, at Greenland. We've got some a uh, little bit of browns showing up um, over the Arctic basin. Uh, and then northern Russia, it's in the blues. So we do have some blues over the Arctic too. So we've got browns coming down through Canada and all the way on this west side of the United States. And then blues where it's colder than normal. Worldwide, we're up 0.3 C, higher than normal. The Northern Hemisphere is up 0.6 C. The Arctic is up 0.2 C. The Tropics are up 0.5 C. The Southern Hemisphere is in balance. The Antarctic is 2.5 C, lower than normal. Here's the sea level pressure. We've got a um, big low system over the Arctic right there. There are your highs and lows around the planet. Let's look at the jet stream. See, it's swooping, uh, swooping across from Russia all the way across, see, to Alaska and Canada. And this is smoke filled. And so, as this comes across, if there's any precipitation, even snow, uh, rain and snow, that with the smoke, those particulates, when they fall onto the ice, it eats it up. It just eats it up. <clears throat> so we've got, looks like two jet streams up here, one high and one low, lower. And here's the southern hemisphere. That's uh, they've got three, three jet streams. It looks like. So we've got climate chaos. We saw sea ice and snow cover. Here's sea surface temperature anomaly. This is as of yesterday. And look all around uh, where the ice has melted. Uh, it's already up into the browns and reds. Look here in the Laptev Sea. Here uh, along Canada, Alaska, here in the Bering Strait. 
look up here by Russia and here in the Kara Sea. Now I don't know why in the Barents Sea it's it's in the blues, why it's colder than normal. I I don't know why. But see we've got browns around Svalbard. We've got reds uh, and browns around Greenland. Look at this brown up here um, in, in the nearest strait there. Uh, look at the Hudson Bay. It's in the reds. This Baltic Sea is in the reds and pinks. And the red is about 5C higher than normal. The pink area and the light pink goes, the highest it goes is 6C higher than normal. Um, here in the um, Great Lakes, they're already in the reds. Here's the flat view. Look up here in the Oko Sea around Russia. They're in the reds all around. In the Mediterranean, see that's browns and going into the reds. Here's our hot spot in the Pacific. This is in the reds now. It'll stay red probably the rest of the summer. Worldwide we're up 0.4 C higher than normal. Northern Hemisphere and North Pacific are up 0.6 C. North Atlantic is up 0.4 C. And the Southern Hemisphere is up 0.3 C. Now we're ready to move on to NASA World View. <coughs> I've turned on the blue marble layer so we could see the sea ice a little bit better without the clouds. And this is the sea ice concentration layer. Wherever you see all these different colors through the rainbow, um, that's high melt. Here we are today. Where you see the black area, that's no ice. It's water, open water. So we'll click back through. Let's go back to the fourth. And I'll show you what happened this week. So here we are. Last Sunday in my show. So here's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Look at that. It must have been raining that day. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then today. So we can we can see if we zoom in this east side. See that that's breaking up really a lot here on this east side. We've got um, a lot of melt going on in the nearest strait. Here in the Kara Sea that's almost all open. Just see a few dots here and there. And then here's the North Kara Sea. But see that's breaking up. Here's Serenai Zimlia. Here's the Laptev Sea. See all that's open. Look at that. It's just shocking. See all along the coastline there. And um, remember the East Siberian Arctic Shelf is along here in, in the sediments in the ocean where they've found, discovered the high, high pockets of methane, the clathrates, and they're melting, and the, the faster the ice melts, then the more the water heats up. As the water heats up, it, it melts out.
um, thaws out the sediments and thaws out the methane and then it's bubbling up and and pretty soon whenever it'll just go boom we don't know when here's the Bering Strait here's Alaska there's Canada and there's the Beaufort Sea here's the Canadian archipelago and the tributaries are melting here look at the nearest strait look that's we got a big hole right there that's already opened up so that's that's ready for exit all right so we're going to turn off that layer and turn off that layer and now we will look I'll refresh so we can see if we've got all the data okay here's see all this smoke see the gray that's from the fires in Russia see it's coming straight across here we have a lot of smoke in Canada see so here we go let's zoom in and see what it looks like here's Greenland look it's almost no clouds we'll start over here on the right see this is this is almost all gone this wispy here's um, just north of Greenland see here's the ice look these that's breaking up inside there see oops my mouse has a mind of its own here's the nearest strait look at that here's the hole here we go now we're looking through some clouds but you can see the ice breaking up there so here's the west side of Greenland <coughs> and this is ice free see here's the Baffin Bay here's the ice here here's a cloud so this whole west side it's opened up Let's see and as these ice sheet the ice sheet melts um, as we get further along in the season you'll be able to see the ice flowing out especially out through here see see it's kind of frozen right now but this is where the I where the water flows out when the when the ice sheet melts it's got to go somewhere and it comes out through all these these areas Now let's move on. Here's Fallbard. Oh, I was going to show you where it's raining. See this this cloud? That's rain down here. Did we see that on Climate Reanalyzer? I think I missed. I think I skipped that accidentally. Here we go. So it's snowing over the Arctic there's a little bit of rain 
So remember what I said, it's mixed with the smoke and those particulates when they get onto the ice. Uh, it makes dark ice and it's, um, it melts faster. Look, it's raining up here in the Beaufort Sea. Yeah, I missed showing this. Um, look at all this rain around Greenland. So this is why the ice sheet is melting along with the heat. There we go. I knew I'd miss something. Okay, let's go back. Here's Iceland. Let's see? It's almost all ice free. Let's see? Just some there. few areas. Here's Norway. Here's Svalbard. See? It's it's open. There's um there's some ice left on this upper left hand side. Otherwise it's open. Long European is right down here. This is uh where the seed vault is located. This is open. Here's Novaya Zemlya. Here's the Yamal Peninsula. See that all this open water. It's all open. This blue green, this is algae growing. Here's some ice in the North Kara Sea. Here's Severnaya Zemlya. Um, here's Kumsa Mollets. This is the, around this area is where we, we've been seeing the high readings of methane billowing for the last year and a half. So this is the Laptev Sea. It's so cloudy we can't really make out how open this is. I'll, I'll click back through some days and see if we can get a better view. <clears throat> now here's the coastline. See where it's opened up here. Look at that. That's open all, all along the Siberia coastline. Here's um, that little bit of thicker ice that's left. It's breaking up though. See? <coughs> this is open. Here's the Bering Strait. See, that's open. See, there's no ice there. Oh, my mouse did its funny thing. Here's Alaska. See? It's open, open. Here's, here's um, the ice is, uh, <coughs> here's Barrow. So we've got some ice right along up in here. Now we're looking through clouds. Here's the Munston Gulf. See, it's open right through there. Here's the ice. See the, you can see it's all broken up. A lot of open water where it's opening up between the sea ice. <coughs> so this is the Beaufort Sea um, right in here. Right in here in this little arc area is where what's left of the thickest sea ice according to the Navy models. Here we've got water opening up. Let's see.
Lots of clouds today. Well, they're getting snow up there. See, that's opening up. This is Ellesmere Island here. Look. You see that melting. And <coughs> here's the nearest strait. I think I already showed this. Okay, I wanted to show here on this eastern side what's happening with the ice. See, that's breaking up. Let's go. Let's go. Here's yesterday. Look at this. Here's a really good view. Here's the nearest strait. Look how open that is. And then here's the ice that's breaking up. That's in high melt. See? Here we go. Here's just north of Greenland. See, that's coming apart. Look at this. So here's the Beaufort Sea from yesterday. This is a better view. Look at all this open water. Some years this opens up really fast. Other years there's still some ice left here. Um, I don't know how it's going to be this year. Uh, it's still got ice. I mean, it's got quite a bit of ice in, in it. Look at the smoke. See, it's streaming across. See. Look, okay, here we've got open water. This is Severnaya Zemlya. Here's the Vovilov ice cap. Here's Combs and Mollets. It's just, so here's the Latev Sea. It's just way too cloudy to see anything here. Let's go back. Here we were on the ninth. Now you can see more open water. This is all open. It's just underneath clouds there. See, it's just wispy, just little wispy pieces of ice. Anyway, you get the idea. So that's where we're at with that. 
now we'll look at some earthquakes <clears throat> and um, that 6.0 happened when was it a couple of days ago just south of me about two hours south of me it's still rocking there it's still um, swarming I didn't feel it I was laying down in the afternoon and I didn't feel it so I took these pictures this afternoon there were 356 worldwide so that's gone way down since since a couple of days ago in the lower 48 we've got 259 see all the movement is out here up and down California and Nevada mo mostly one little one over here in Tennessee and a little bit in the Pacific Northwest and up in Yellowstone here in uh, Southern California they had 37 Cyril's Valley Ridgecrest had 23. The largest was a 2.6. From Tonopah over to Mammoth Lakes, there were 26. Here's the area that had the 6.0. This is um, just a little bit northwest of the picture that I just showed. And this is at Colville. They're calling it Antelope Valley now but Colville is um, where the, they're just clustering all around there there are 126 here today and here's Lake Tahoe and this is Lake Topaz 395 highway 395 comes down uh, from Carson City through Minden Gardnerville and straight down past Lake Topaz it comes uh, crosses into California right at Lake Topaz and this was just a few miles south of there and it's see the highway is right in the big middle of all that cluster um, this is looking in the Reno area there was only one uh, 1 1.8 at Sierraville here is the San Andreas fault line from San Francisco down there were nine the geysers area and a little bit north of there 22 today here's a 4.0 on the base of the Juan de Fuca plate and we also had one up up higher 4.1 yesterday on the Juan de Fuca plate Pacific Northwest over to Yellowstone had 12 and here's this 2.2 at Kingston Tennessee Puerto Rico is showing 5 today we've got one off the coast of El Sal Salvador 4.1 got three in South America 5.0 at Chive Peru 4.3 Pucaipa Peru and a 4.3 in uh, San Antonio de la something in Argentina South Atlantic had a 4.9 South Sandwich Islands region Hawaii had 18 mainly at Kilauea and Pahala so a lot of these numbers are way down because um, of the earthquake in California the swarming it's taking pressure off of a lot of other places 58 in the Alaska region and we had a, a cluster down here in the Aleutian Islands at Attu Station uh, 5.3 was the biggest one so far also 5.1 but 5.3 so far 
In the South Pacific, only one of 4.7 at Hihifo Tonga. In this picture, we've got four, uh, 4.2 Northern Mariana Islands, um, 4.5 at Natsai, Japan, 4.5 at Tobolo, Indonesia, and a 4.6 at Gorontalo, Indonesia. Here in the Kuril Islands was a 4.7. We've got three in this picture, 4.6 at Savai, Greece, 4.4 at Rosh, Tajikistan, and a 4.4 at al Hasima, Morocco, North Africa. That's all of those. Now if we look at the website, we've got 322 right now. <clears throat> I want to go back and show you a close-up California quake. Right now there's 116. If we turn on the last seven days for all magnitudes, this area had 709 earthquakes in the last week. Here was the 6.0. It first came in as a 6.2, then they downgraded it to a 5.9, and then they upgraded it to a 6.0. They kept changing the reporting station from um, Smith Valley to Merkleyville, or Markleyville to Colville to now it's Antelope Valley but it's been the same time it came in on the 8th at 3.49 in the afternoon, seven and a half kilometers deep. Not much before that, um, in the last, uh, before that, there was a 2.2 a that came in next to it just like less than a minute before it happened at um, 349.00 and then the 6.0 came in at 349.48 so 40, 48 seconds later and that set it all off and then 5.2 uh, then lots of threes and fours um, I was looking through these a lot, and these are all pretty shallow. We had, there were quite a few either at zero kilometers depth or at a negative depth, like this one at a negative 0.5 kilometers deep. And so that means that the magma is rising and coming up in, in these mountains. This is in a mountainous area and um, see here's one a negative 0.4 so the magma is coming up in the chamber so you always got to think about that when you see these negative depths anyway I'm not going to go through all those but um, it's still rocking with 700 and something in the last week, mainly since since the eighth. Look at if we leave that leave that on. Here is this uh, four point one on the Juan de Fuca plate. That was yesterday. Here we are worldwide, 2,711 this week. We had one up in the Arctic, 
right next to Svalbard. See, right on the red line. That came in on the 9th at 2.38 in the morning. These times are, that I'm telling you, are Pacific time. So, and Hawaii had had a five, they had a five this week out in the ocean, 5.2, see, just north of Hawaii. Then in the Philippines, this area, Topolo, but the, these all happened in the ocean. There was a 6.1 here. And that came in like the day after the 6.0 in California. So um, I'm thinking this kind of got set off by that. So we've got 10 in here in this region 6.1 some fives and then fours and you know if we went to EMSC there would probably be hundreds down here of smaller earthquakes Let's see look at around this um, Antarctic plate line. Lots of movement. Lots of movement down here in the South Atlantic. Let's see. Anyway, that's what we've got. I always like to finish my shows with reading from the Bible to bring our focus back to the spiritual and for us to remember that we are spiritual beings and um, I don't know about you but I'm I'm ready to go home I'm ready to to uh, to go home as soon as God says time to go it's like okay so I'm reading out of Colossians these are Paul's letters to the Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and to all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge and this I say lest any man should beguile you with enticing words for though I be absent in the flesh yet am I with you in the spirit joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and stabilized in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, 
hath he quickened together with him, and having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and hands, having nourishment ministered and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances, touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom in will worship, and humility, and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Colossians chapter 2 So, I think we need to really keep our eyes on heaven and keep being as close to Jesus and God as we can and just have be under their wing and so that they can guide us through these last few days and weeks and hours that we all may have and that we not be tempted by by the dark forces and by Satan and um, we can be clean and ready for his return and for the heavenly kingdom so I'm praying for all of you if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ I recommend you do it while you still have a chance so I love you all hope you have a good week and I will be talking to you soon God bless you go in peace and we'll talk to you very soon. Good night.